Mike McCool here in the Royal Examiner studio, and with me today I have two ladies from the Samuels Public Library. We have Erin Rooney and Mikal <laughs> Ashby. I, you have so many titles, I kind of forget what you do. Uh, tell me what you do there at the library. Oh, sure. I am the Youth Services Supervisor, which means I'm lucky enough to work with the kids and teens. Okay. I'm the Adult Reference Supervisor, so um, I'm You usually... work with the big kids. Yep. I work with the big kids. kids. <laughs> yep. Adults get to have fun, too. Well, it's exactly. That, it's that time, um, again, about every month, they come in and tell us about what's going to be happening in the next month. And you can see on the table here, they've got all their goodies and their cheat sheets and all the stuff uh, going on. Uh, who wants to go first? Kids or adults? Why don't I go first this time, sure. if you don't mind? Mm -hmm. That'd be awesome. Um, so one of our most important ways to raise funds is our book sales. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have our book and bake sale October 1st. And um, Saturday, like Saturday starts at 10 a.m. Wow. Yep. And it continues, like we're closed on Sunday, but we also have the Fossil Book and Bake Sale 10 a.m. on Monday. Okay. So great way if you want to find some fantastic books for your collection. I think it's one of the best deals in town, personally. Mm -hmm. See, that's where I donate all my great business books. I take them. They never end up on the shelf. They always end up on your book sale because they all oh, we don't need all them business books, you know. And so <laughs> yeah, but that's a huge help to us because oh, then someone yeah. buys it and raises money for the library. Oh, so. see, I knew they'd have an excuse for not using my <laughs> book. Now you guys do. Uh, it's great. A lot of people do. You got a bunch of extra books if they can't use them or if they yep. have multiple copies, mm -hmm. um, then you know, or they're not appropriate. Uh, They'll put them in the book sale. Absolutely. Yeah. And we also have a little bookstore, which is another wonderful oh, fundraiser for yeah. the library. Mm -hmm. And it's so much fun to go in there and to browse. There's always really something kind of special in there. At least the bookstores are kind of, it's kind of like a bookstore then. So I mean, it, it is, is a, a little bookstore. bookstore mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what you get when you first walk in. Is that what yeah, that little room is? Yeah, it's super cozy in there. And, oh, I didn't um, realize. I thought that's where you skip all the secret books. Mm -hmm. No, well, you find all of these little jewels. Like every yep. time I go in there, I find something that I'm like, wow. So we could buy some of those are for sale. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, they're all that. for sale, and it's a great fundraiser for the library. Well, it's not, obviously, you don't, we need a big sign there. Says, I need to, yeah, and we need to talk more about that <laughs> yeah. wonderful bookstore. I, I mean, I've been in there many times, and I didn't realize that was a bookstore to go in and buy books. Mm -hmm. And it's, and, and honestly, the, um, the volunteers that man it, they're super friendly, and I literally They don't always, push those books on me like I can buy them. I mean, <laughs> no, but I literally find like a treasure every single mm -hmm. time I go yeah. in there. And so there's always something sort of unique. And we need to put a little sign that buy a book. And history. Yeah. And yeah. All sorts yeah, of things. So well, we've got something new to do. It's okay. run by our Friends of the Library organization. Oh, yeah. They'll actually be having a preview night. Um, usually it's always Thursday in the um, in the at a late afternoon when we're uh, before we close. If you uh, decide to become a friends member, you get to have a little preview peek at, at the books for the book sale. Yeah, good, good. Yes. We call those fossils, right? Yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> F O S L fossils. <laughs> There's always an acronym for something. All um, right. So what else you got on your list? You got speaking of. Oh, it's books. that time. I know. So. National Media Services, yes. Mike McCool, you guys do Mark stuff. Williams. we got to give Mark all the credit does, to Mark. Well, Mark has been working on this with me for, for many, years. For years, he does a great and job. And you guys are artists. And um, this, we have our um, holiday writing contest coming up. Mm -hmm. It'll start October 3rd. And it's for K all the way to 12th grade. Okay. And every child who submits something, 500 words or less, it could be a short story, a poem, it can be accompanied by an illustration, or they can even just send a picture by itself and mm -hmm. do the art part of the contest. Um, it just has to be about the holiday season. And so October 3rd is when it starts. And in mid-November, they drop off all their entries. And if they're selected as a winner, they get professionally published in this beautiful, beautiful it, book. And um, it's first class. I mean, let's give credit to Mark. He spends a lot of time Mark on it. Mark is amazing. And he just makes it look. But I also want to give credit to you as well, well because I feel like you've I've always given him. us, I mean, <laughs> you know, given do. us really good deals. With the, yes, you know, like we you've are. Been we we very help helpful. sponsor that because yeah. it's a great work and kids really enjoy it. But yeah. it looks so different when you get it and you put it in this nice book. And you can show it to people. Those kids are pretty proud the of what they did. The kids get so proud of this. And in addition to getting their little booklet, um, if they're first place winners, 
Royal Oak Bookshop is kind enough to give them a $10 certificate to go. their bookstore. So they're another sponsor. And, um, you should give a bookstore a book certificate to your bookstore, too. That's a good idea, although Roy, it's really nice <laughs> because really... Royal Oak has been sponsoring oh, oh, it for so best. long. They are like the and best And they do kept... such a nice job. Yeah, so yeah. I really love bringing people in. You can talk to Mark in. about the Royal Oak Bookstore. He lives nearby. We think the I think world he lives. Them. I think he lives in there. He's a, he's a book. Yeah, book I'm a bookworm myself. <laughs> <laughs> and then this year, I'm super excited because this is the first year since COVID hit that for the winners, we're going to do a winner's reception dinner. Well, that'd be great. I mean, not dinner, excuse me. We, we serve hors d'oeuvres and, you know, light food, not like a full yeah. six-course meal. Oystovers. But um, <laughs> it's a wonderful reception. We call the kids up that are winners, and if they sure. choose, they read their work. Otherwise, I read it for them, and then they get to kind of show off to their grandparents, their That's parents. Right. Um, well, it's just a wonderful, Mark, wonderful... we need to go down there with the camera and do, and do that. That'd I would great. love you That'd to visit. That'd we may even great. get the sheriff's department involved well, they're, this they, year. They're great readers, aren't they? I they, didn't realize the deputies they could do read story, so well. <laughs> they do story time for us every month. I know it. They do yeah. a great job. That's great. Yeah. Um, now, in addition to that, we have an author who is coming to visit for okay. story time, and that's the 5th of October, and it's called Princess... Mamuna opens a tea shop, and um, she's such a lovely lady. We're so lucky to have her come for story time. And what we're going to have is a light tea time to accompany the story. So it's going to be super little... fun for the little tiny ones. We promise it'll be safe, no hot boiling tea. We're right, going to make right, it. Right. We're going to make it child friendly. Right, right. Um, in addition to this, we also have this weekend. A wonderful children's garden program. They're gonna go, all the kids are gonna go into the garden and learn to do natural weaving. So they make this little square, and then they come up with beautiful yarn colors. That I, I noticed just, you didn't weave anything. On I that. did. I didn't get a chance to weave anything. And then they can even put pieces of nature, like leaves and oh. berries, in it, and make a little art project there for mom go. or dad. There you go. So that's fun. And then we also have the fire department coming on the 19th. And what's super cool about that is they're going to bring their fire truck. And the firemen are going to read for us. Well, that'll be cool. So, yeah, we're super excited. And then the week after, on the 26th, the sheriff's department's coming. And they're going to read for us. Okay. The kids get so excited when they see the sheriff's department, the police department, or the fire department the men coming in in their uniform mm -hmm. and reading to them and reaching out to them, but also bringing their vehicles. So right. it's just so a, what day are the readings on and the times? Because what age are these kids normally? So we young have ones? toddler and preschool story time every Wednesday, right. which is today. We have one. We have them today. Amazing how many um, kids show up in it. It is. We sometimes easily get a hundred kids. For both story times. Isn't that hard? To, I mean, it's really So, yeah, it's really it. neat. It, yeah, it's I'm cool. so grateful for that. Um, and so, one is at 10 15 for toddlers, and then preschool is at 11. And in addition to having like special readers and, and authors, we always have little songs and crafts and we just have a lot of fun with it. It's just right. a, it's a. You're trying to build an audience for when they grow we up. Are. You uh, you hit <laughs> it. Getting people to come into the library and see all the great things. The parents too. They've come in yes. for the little kids to do that. Then they realize of all the things you have in there for adults, and it's more than mm -hmm. just books. Yes, and we and if you start from the ground up, from when they're itty bitty, and by the time Cradle they get to, get to your That's department, <laughs> they're well versed in how the yeah. library works. Yeah. Um, now the other, you know, I'm not going to tell you about every single program we have, but the other one, the last one, I wanted to highlight is we do uh, special needs programs. I have a wonderful partner named Winnie Ellinger for those, mm -hmm. and she's involved with ARC. She's involved with a ton of special needs organizations, and she is helping us create a special needs escape room on Saturday the 22nd at 1.30, so okay. that, you know, a regular escape room would be frustrating for some special needs kids. Or adults, this one is completely special need friendly. Okay, cool. So, and the theme is the barnyard. All right. And Gotta have a theme. <laughs> always have to have a theme for everything. <laughs> so, it's all yours now. <laughs> now, what do the big kids look forward to? That? <laughs> Things. Um, the first thing is we have um, two new uh, services offered by the Library of Virginia. Uh, if you have a library card with us, you can access those services. And one of those is we have a new uh, language service called Transparent Language. Uh, and that is okay. replacing Rocket Language that we used to have. Uh, this is really cool. They have, this is 110, but I believe it's now up to 120 different languages you can choose from to learn. 
Um, and amazing. you can access that through, if you're on your computer, uh, you can go to our website, click on the link, um, and or if you want to use your own device, so like your phone, your tablet, mm -hmm. they do have an app you can download. Uh, you just create the account, put in your library card, and you can just start learning a new language. And uh, like I said, they have over like 120. They have some really cool, like they have Native American languages. They have different... ESL too, they right? Have ESL. They have an ESL yep. component. So yeah. um, to, to help learn English, they have a bunch of different services with that that you can do. Um, yeah. they, it's real easy, you know. I, I've always heard the commercial S O C K S. You learn by spelling out words, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> <laughs> Spanish for something. I don't know. And the the way you hope learn, it's like, hope it's something good. <laughs> Hope. I don't know either. <laughs> um, and it, it's not just like, oh, you know, here's vocabulary. It's they teach you how they actually use your phone or your cam, uh, your um, computer's uh, microphone to help you learn correct pronunciation. Right, right. Um, and it's doing grammar and all that other stuff. It's not just, you know, oh, you know, doing flashcards or something sure, like that. Sure. So they try and make it very immersive. And then they also do have a kids version called Kids Speak for some of the main languages. So like Spanish, French currently. Uh, there's a couple of other ones as well that just make it that's very um, kid friendly. It's, it's specific specifically geared towards helping okay. Which is learn. wonderful, because I don't believe any of our previous foreign language databases had a kid's aspect. I don't believe so, no. Yeah, so I've yeah, never seen one. Kids are where they one. learn at that young age. Yeah, like that's when their brain is so it. fluid. Right. Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm going to say, when Erin, we got to just put her on half speed here. Now, Erin, slow down a little bit. <laughs> I, I'm trying Sorry. to grasp all the things you're saying here. Mark is going to have to slow the camera down. So I'm can, so excited. I, well, she does get excited. So this language thing, you know something about Americans. You know, we barely can speak one language. And uh, and you go to most places in the world, they all speak multiple languages. And yeah. it's great to go in and just learn a few words and phrases. I notice if you go someplace in a foreign language and you can just say a few words with it, you can just see the people that you're speaking to just kind of beam like, wow, Thanks a lot. I mean, at least you can say hello in a, in no, a language. It's, yeah, it's it, true. It and then should, vice yeah. versa, even when someone that speaks a language to you, a foreign language, foreigner, if they can just say a few words, you feel much more connected to them. That's a really good point. Yeah, I agree. So it's great. Yeah. We should all learn to do that. Take a few minutes and just learn a few words. Just few a word, word or two. Yeah. Yeah. I always learn. I, I learned to speak, you know, where's the bathroom? You know, and can I get a glass of iced tea? You know, so that's that's cute. <laughs> well, and you can customize your um, your learning experience with this. They have different types of lessons that, like, if you're you strictly want it for traveling, they sure. can, they have it focused on that, or they also do have it for um, business as well, right. where it's specifically for that business culture of that country yeah, for that know, language. Just FYI, they teach a, a police Spanish. And it's police languages, they learn all the commands in the language, you know, like assume oh. the position or whatever it is. So they do. I mean, they learn phrases and That's things. That's important. They yeah. really can't That's... maybe understand what the people are saying, but they can give the commands in, in, in foreign languages. So we all learn. Which would make sense. And firemen, yeah. they all learn different things because when we're nowadays, our, our communities are so multicultural. And it's not like, you know, years ago, people came here and this, they quickly assimilated in the language. Now yeah. we're kind of like they form these communities, and some people have been here 30 or 40 years and, and really have not mastered the language, English language. And so they, because they've totally been immersed in their own, you know, in their own community. So it's yeah. good to learn these things. And I'm sure our, our first responders, you know, they learn these words so they can communicate in an emergency with somebody to think about, you know. We that, that's an important comment because. So I, we really yeah. need to know things like that. I think it's good. Mm -hmm. I think it's only going to get more multicultural as we go along. That's what they say. Uh, it's going to yeah, do it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I try to learn a few words, but I, I wouldn't say I'm extremely talented in foreign yeah. language. Uh, I know a few my, Spanish here's my, here's words my favorite word. and a my few wife, German words. I got a dad joke. My wife always gets after me because I say, I can say cut the grass in French. Mow the lawn. But anyway, that's not that funny. But it's, uh, I understand it's what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> Mow the lawn. Uh, Oh, right. Moving on. Moving you on. need to use the accent. Yeah. Well, That's you know, the problem. I know. You it's the accent. Your accent. I know. I can't That's get the, the accent. Thing. I'm not French. Yeah. <laughs> uh, ooh la la. That's about it. All right. So uh, what? So the language thing is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. Okay. Sorry we got off on a sidetrack there. <laughs> All right. That's okay. The the uh, the other thing we have is um, we have a new way to access um, our online magazines that are uh, available through the Library of Virginia. There is a new app called Magster that um, people can download. The app um, it's Magster for libraries. We should have a link for it on our website. And again, you just create an account, you add your library card, and it is a subscription based. So anything they have in their library, you can download. They don't have a limit to how many issues for the magazines. Wow. Um, you can just access at your own leisure. That's kind Which of cool. is wonderful. Yeah. This, this digital yeah. world is coming. I mean, look at the Royal Examiner. I mean, it's 
we don't even print anything. Uh, you know, we started off thinking about, you know, printing it. And then we got into logistics of distribution. And we found out that, you know, it just goes to, we got about 80% of the readers read it on their phone. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and it's just like this. Uh, the, our world is revolving around this mobile phone. And uh, in fact, I read something the other day, Google, if you're not, if your website and what you interact on the internet is not for the phone, Google don't even want to have anything to do with you. I mean, basically they're, they're saying it's got to be mobile friendly. It's got to work on the mobile because that's where the majority of people are going. So, you know, we do, we want our websites to look all nice and pretty, but we really need to start thinking about how can we make it look good on a phone? You know, so we got to think about that even on mm -hmm. your guy's website. Uh, go back and look at it. How does it work on a phone? And how does yeah, it work on an point. Apple? How does it You're work right. on my mm -hmm. Android? And different things like that because people are going to interact with these things on the phone. And uh, But I also like your point, like Royal Examiner, I see that the most of all of the news sure. items that I could see because I get the emails. Right. And we, so we blast it out I, there and remind you, right? Mm -hmm. No, so I feel like I... I interact the most with the Royal sure. Examiner, you know, and that's you really where I'm getting phone, the news. But you're doing a lot well, of Well, I'll phone. also take breaks on the, my computer at work. Okay. So, yeah. I'll, so I'll either do it on my phone or I'll do it on my computer. You know, those little notifications pop up, you know, we get that. Well, I just see it. Like, I'll see it right at Royal Examiner. Yeah, yeah, we <laughs> pop it right up there. So that's just yeah. an example of how things are going to be doing yes. that more and more and more. Mm -hmm. All right, you got something else too there. Yeah, we actually have a really exciting program um, next month um, on Thursday, October 13th at 6 p.m. We have a presentation from the hosts of the popular Appalachian Mysteria podcast. Uh, the um, host, uh, Jay Kendall Parkins Perkinson and uh, Sarah James McLaughlin will uh, discuss the show's third season, which revolves around the unsolved murders of Julie Williams and Loli Wynan in uh, 1996. Uh, unfortunately, the couple uh, was viciously, viciously attacked in the Shenandoah National Park. So mm -hmm. it is a true crime uh, talk about, um, the, you know, the, this unfortunate tragedy that happened in our local community. This was the National Park. Right. Yeah. So um, I'm really excited to have them here. It is an unsolved uh, case, so they're really trying to, you know, still get the word out there. You know, this they really want to be able to solve the case. So right. they're going to be uh, coming in and talking about their third season. So. That sounds so of, exciting. So cool. yeah. And we it's perfect for the month of October. Yes. Mm -hmm. We just posted a story. The state now has... The Virginia State Police has a website for cold cases. Mm -hmm. Really? They say there's no such thing as a cold case. All cases are continually being investigated. But cases like this, uh, you can go on there and see all the cases that are still pending that have not been solved yet. And they go back quite a few years. And there's a website now on that. And you can read about it on the Royal Examiner. Just search cold cases. It's kind of interesting. I just posted that the other day. So it goes right along with this. And people are yeah. interested in that. Oh, yeah. And what's really strange is they'll have shows like this and these websites. And 20 years later, someone will find out, of, oh, I remember something, a little tidbit of exactly. information will bring it to conclusion and they you read all the time where they're catching people 20 and 30 40 years later uh, of uh, terrible crimes that they committed and thought they got away got got, got away with and um, they yes and i think that's justice is, uh, is finally served. served and yeah. it can take 20 years because i had a classmate that unfortunately was murdered and i always followed the case and 20 years later they found her killer, right. and he ironically had been a family man for 20 right. years. Yep. No one suspected him of anything, but the more horrific part of it is he had killed three other women. Right. So he was connected to not just her murder, but four murders. Right, and all it takes is one little yeah. little thing that the public... I think it was like a DNA thing yeah. or something. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. But we had, when the sheriff was in here uh, the other day and the, the deputies, we were talking about little things like that. It's all about the community and the community yeah. policing and, and everything is all about community. And so, you know, we need to be involved in, we need to be involved in our community. And not forget, not forget victims that may, exactly. ha it may have happened right. 20 years ago, right. but it still happens yeah, it's and a, it's still it's relevant. It's a scar that yeah. you have. You carry that with you. You never, they say, oh, your time heals all wounds, but it takes a long time. Uh, for that wound to heal, heal. Particularly so. for the fam, you know, yeah. like everybody so close yeah. to them. Yeah, you but there's, it's cool. These there's all sorts of podcasts. Oh, yeah. out yeah. there, and there's people like that yeah. enjoying it, and they're very interesting. That's our new books. Yep. You know, really, it's a 
kind of like this show right here. It's a yeah. it's an audio blog, you know, a, a, Absolutely. or video blog, excuse me. So, yeah, it's kind of cool. Yeah, I listen I, to a lot of them. You do. I wonder if there's new information. You know, you wonder, have they discovered anything else? Well, like I said, but anybody, we'll find yeah, out yeah. if you come to the uh, program. Yeah. To ask I questions, watch like episode that. three. <laughs> yeah, well, so it's Appalachian Mysteria. Their podcast is available on uh, most podcast apps. Like for instance, I right. use Spotify. Um, and the, so for this one um, is their third season, Outlandish, and okay. it's a uh, they have several episodes. I'm pretty sure it's finished by now. Uh, and it's I've been listening to it. It's really interesting, and I highly recommend it. All right, that's cool. All right, well, you got two more things. Or is uh, that it? Yeah, you know, there was the one. And then the other thing I just wanted to highlight, we do have our Books and Beyond Book Club uh, that meets now every uh, third Thursday at 6 p.m. And for uh, October, we will be doing the uh, thriller The Silent Patient by um, Alex uh, Michael... Mm, I always say it wrong. Michael Edius. I think. Uh, can't so. say it worse than I do. I butcher her name all the time. <laughs> it doesn't um, bother me. But it's it's a really cool thriller. Uh, we like to try doing something a little, um, either a mystery or a thriller for October. So right. makes sense. Looking Halloween is a, a lot. Of, a lot of people in our community are really involved in the library. It's just amazing. It's you know since you moved on the other side of town, I'm thinking, well, you just don't really see it, but. Oh, no, we get more people now than we've ever gotten, yeah, and I'm so yeah. grateful for that. Yeah, it's great. It's yeah, a great facility. If you are not been to the library, you. you need to go. Uh, you mentioned something about a library card. Uh, are we still doing our little platinum library cards? Anybody going to talk about that? I um, believe this is going to be the last week for anybody who wants to. It's the uh, last week. So yeah. now is the time to come in and mm -hmm. get get it. Yep. Yeah. I need to. I know, uh, Michelle, she's twisting my arm, and, you know. The, <laughs> Got to come in. Oh, to get a card. Do you? I, Get my, get my to platinum. get the platinum yeah, card. Yeah, get my car. Maybe please I'll get do a that. Platinum. I'll, I'll call her up and say, hey, please save me one. <laughs> I'll, I'll get in there soon. <laughs> you know, I'm in there a lot, but, you know, it's just like, okay, you know, I'll do it. I don't know. It's like it's Well, you're probably very busy here, yeah, yeah, so. Well, I know. It's, it's always an excuse. There's all, We always have an excuse yeah, to do something. Yeah, we always do. But it's there's true. so many cool things going on at the <laughs> library. It's a gym in our community. Great staff. Thank a lot you. of activities. And it's just like say, it's not just books. I mean, you can rent movies or, you know, rent. Or they're free if you have a library card. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's movies and games and there's activities and there's memory makers. You can take your own VHS and uh, movies mm -hmm. down there. And if you got time to sit there and... Uh, Aaron's got a machine down there mm -hmm. you can transfer these things to. Normally people send them to me, but please send them to the library. Go to the library yep, and learn how to do help. it. I'll uh, be glad to, you know, uh, to, to do that. Uh, get those off those old tapes. Get them on something yeah. digital so that you can keep them. Uh, but that's a great service, too. Now, you wouldn't think that that would be at the library. I know. You know? It's so cool that she did yeah. that. <laughs> I like this idea of the bookstore because bookstores are disappearing. Bookstore. I, I love going to the bookstore and just perusing through the inventory. And, you know, a lot of times um, there's just one book and someone, you know, we publish some books and someone, yeah, I want to put my book in all the bookstores. I said, this is a few years ago when there was a lot of bookstores. I said, do you realize just putting one copy of your book in Walden Books is 8,000 something copies of your book you got to print? And they, they, well, maybe we won't go in every bookstore. And we don't realize how the quantity of how many bookstores. Uh, I was out at Powell's Bookstores. You ever been there? The mm -hmm. one that's Google it. It's a great yeah. place. It's in Portland, and it takes the entire city block. Oh, and wow. it's, that's it's, awesome. And it's that's multiple, our dream, and it's Aaron. Multiple, yep. multiple okay, you're getting us floor. jealous. And I'm getting chills just thinking about it. Uh, but Google it up. It's Powell's okay. Bookstore. It's a cool place. To to, uh, it's a it's a destination. So uh, there's a lot of places like that. We there's uh, several in. Uh, Tucson as well has some big bookstores. They moved into, they started out like the library, moved around, and now they've taken up a huge space in a strip mall because they were a store, a major store went out. I mean, it's thousands of square feet. So it's really cool that people, they do CDs and DVDs and books. And, you but know, I'm so glad some of them are surviving. It's surviving, I yeah. was heartbroken as I saw the trend. I know. Because I've always been a big bookstore person. And one of my favorites is Blue Plate in Winchester mm -hmm. because they have so many unusual books. And right. you never know what you're going to discover. You know, we still, though, publish a half a million new titles a year. Wow. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. And I bet you have half of them in your library. Oh, and a lot of people that are self-publishing these days. That's it. That's, that's another I'm big thing. I'm working on another one right now with B.K. Haynes here. He's, believe it or not, he's a prolific author. And we know B.K. Yeah. sold land. You know, he's down on the corner there of Royal. Mm -hmm. and um, uh, But, you know, he's pushing 90. 
Uh, he's getting up there, but he has written quite a few books, uh -huh. and it, it's really amazing. I'm thinking, I, I start reading, and I'm thinking, wow, this is really good. So anyway, we got a lot of authors right here in our own community. And, they, and the mm -hmm. authors are so, and there's so many of them are willing to come and visit. Exactly. And read a story with mm -hmm. us or do a program with us. And I can honestly say the local authors have been amazing mm -hmm. to the library. Right. And um Got to give them a lot of respect because they go out of their way. Sure. There's a lot you of know. talent. Everyone says they have a book in them. I mean, I'd like to write a book. I'd like to mm -hmm. write a book. Too. But Wait. I have to, oh, you too? You'd like Let to me write. tell you the easiest way to write a book, it's truthfully, is just record yourself with a book. If you sit at the typewriter, I don't know how many times I've sat there, you know, chapter one, and it's kind of a joke, and that's as far as you oh, get. Oh, you mean if you Try to write it. it. But if you just sit and have someone interview you, and then transcribe it, you've got 90% of your book done because you have the knowledge of what you want to write in your head, but you just can't put it on paper. So the best way is get someone to talk to you about it. Now tell me your story about your book and you'll just rattle it off like crazy because you know it, but you can't put it in words. So say it, record it, transcribe it, and there you got almost got your whole book written. But see, my book, no one but my family would want to read because the one I'm working on right now is just about the interesting stories of her genealogy. Well, so I the, am going to self-publish it for the, my daughter, yeah, but yeah, I can't. Change the name to protect the innocent and <laughs> embellish it a little bit, you know, just like most books are, you know, it's historical based. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what they that's call a, it. That's you know, it's a, a thought. That's yeah, a thought. You, you know, don't have to be. 100 percent you know we base it on our family like most things are anyway if you read about most things they say they're you know, like that south park and all the little different years oh, stories yeah, like you that. Associate. it's all based upon people i grew up with you know <laughs> i just changed the name so they wouldn't sue me that's a possibility <laughs> I, yeah i don't know how i'll do it but, uh, you'll find but you're way. right everybody wants everybody to. has a story yeah. uh, and you can find out other people's story at your library so it's absolutely kind of cool. stories are where it's at yeah yep. that's it, it really that's is great. that's great yep. that's great it's a window to the world. It is. What they say, uh, what, there's a quote about uh, the people you meet, the places you go, and the books you read is what, something like that about your... Probably you know. what defines you, yes, really. Yes, it is. That's, it's really um, cool. And, you know, I would say, and you're probably similar, my heroes are authors mm -hmm. and artists the people that are working in the creative fields right, and, right. you know, you can, there's lots of people making millions and millions of dollars yeah, and... Yeah. Great for them, right. but it's the authors and the artists well, look that what they've really done move with, me. And we kind of poo-poo like comic books and things, but that's an art. <laughs> oh, that's an art, and, absolutely, and that's, and that's really very fun. relevant. And it's now, yeah. if you look at our mm -hmm. movies and things, it's, it's coming into its own into the Marvel world, you know. Mm -hmm. But these all started off with, you know, these aren't kids writing these comic books. These are grown men, you know, mm -hmm. or yeah. women, and uh, they've created these stories, and now they've been brought to life. In the in the motion pictures, so uh, you know it's kind of cool. And I just anime, watched Avengers last the, night. Yeah, one of the Avengers. Then, <laughs> and then the anime, the, mm -hmm. the stories and the art, and oh, uh, yeah. uh, we have a, uh, one of our uh, former employees. She's really into that, and uh, she does a lot of music uh, right here in town. Uh, uh, Alyssa Curzonay. Oh neat. And uh, okay. she's really cool. She'd be a great speaker for you to come in and do that. But she's involved. She travels literally. Maybe for Sammy Con. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. she literally travels around the world and gives presentations. And who who wouldn't who would have thunk it right? You know, it's just amazing. Oh, I think that's really it's neat. And this whole world of anime, it's just like, I don't really know anything about it other than I know she goes a lot of places and there's a lot of conferences and she makes CDs oh, it's a lot of and art. Yeah. Oh, I think yeah. it's huge. Oh, well, there you go. So, you know, <laughs> we have people like that right here in our, in, in our community that, uh, you know, uh, around the world, they're well known and no one knows them here. So it just depends. We all have our little niches, you know, so. That is a good point. I want so to. We need to check yeah. things out. We no, you're right. Start They're, featuring some yeah. of our local talent at our mm -hmm. library. Well, no, that's why I wanted to feature this. Yeah. You know, um, this book, The Princess yeah. Mamona Opens a Tea Shop by Natalie Manzaras oh, and of M. Tea Sharif. Shop, if you want to put on a tea for little kids, you need to talk to my wife because she is the <laughs> tea putter on expert. <laughs> And we have more. She likes tea time. Tea time, and we got more decorations and tea goodies and pots and teas. Uh, she could, she could open a tea room and 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 form it up. So she must have some English or Irish. In she it. has or Scottish. Well, she loves. I've taken her to England a couple of times, and they actually went up. You know, they China paint. Her and her mother did, 
and oh, they've traveled around the world going to these conferences to learn, you know. Techniques. Oh, that's so cool. But cool. they all love that little tea thing, you know, and she puts them on for kids and adults and it puts on these tea parties. So you should talk to her about that. She, I will one day. Now, this one, though, Patty McHugh is so excited. She's oh, yes, the one she's, who's doing the story. Oh, yeah, that's great. And she she's, already has the whole tea time oh, set up. And she loves tea time. She so she's it. another one who yeah, just adores yeah. tea time. Yeah. And whenever she can fit a tea time into the theme, she will do it. Uh, she's like my wife. <laughs> I know Patty. She's great. She's, she's great. fantastic. She's great. She's great. I mean, my whole crew is. Yeah, so, but she yeah. loves working there. She told me she just loves that job. So just... It FYI. means the world to me, and yeah. um, I think they, that a lot of them have been saying that, and yeah. I, they're such good workers, and I'm so yeah. grateful for they them. They found their found They them. found their niche. I yeah. have uh, four of them, yeah. and each one uh, is just stellar. But you can also yeah. use more volunteers, right? Um, uh, we have over 30 teen volunteers. We can always use more teen volunteers. We also have one or two adult volunteers, but even if we don't have as much in the children's side for the adult volunteers, they're always looking for more volunteers right. mm -hmm. to help out with the adult side. Sure, sure. And so... Um, you just never know. People, so go and check it out. It might be something you're Absolutely. Yep. We're, yeah, we're, we have, there's always opportunities to volunteer somewhere. Mm -hmm. you know? We get so much help at that library, and we are so grateful yeah, for yeah, it. It's, it's great. Yeah. Well, it's your, great community. your new director is doing a great job. She yep. is. Absolutely. <laughs> so we'll give Michelle... Uh, Give her some kudos. Yeah, yes. Yeah, we'll <laughs> she deserves it. Yeah, she's, she's good. She, she's like uh, Megan Bowers out of the Humane Society. They they just like live and breathe their jobs. They're just so excited about working. Which is wonderful. Megan does that, and I noticed Michelle does that too. Mm -hmm. She Last time she's in her, she had little library things. Oh, on it's so cute. Yeah. She has like a whole <laughs> wardrobe, wardrobe about, relating about, to books, and I think that is so neat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we can draw this to an end here. I think we beat the death of library, but it's... <laughs> It's great to do all these things. I just can't, you know, we just keep talking about it. And uh, next I want to see what you weave there. Yes. So let's we'll see what it is. All right. Again, thanks again, Aaron and Macau. Macau. Either way works. Macau, Macau, Macau Michael, 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 Michaela, Michaela, whatever it is. <laughs> Miss Ashby, she's great. Thanks. Uh, uh, and uh, Miss Rooney. So we'll, we'll, we'll call it an end. Again, thanks so much for coming in. Thank you. And we'll go ahead and see you next month. Yep. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Thank you.